This week, getting in shape at 40. What's working? What's not working? Celtics in six. Gambling in North Texas. Rip reacts. Keys to a successful summer. Happy Bonachari Twins Day. Let's go. This episode of One Star Recruits is brought to you by 500level.com. The best t-shirts and sports on the internet at your fingertips. They got all the guys, NBA finals coming up, NHL playoffs, Stanley Cup finals this week. Our guys, Jalen Brown, Kyrie Irving, Matthew Kachuk from the Florida Panthers, Connor McDavid from the future champ Edmonton Oilers. Use the discount code DK and RIP. That's DK and RIP. 20% off everything on the site. Let's go. Yo, aloha. Welcome to the podcast. Right off the bat, swinging for the fences, right to left field. Bam, for accountability rip, putting it out there. You heard a new discount code in the intro. I'm doing a callback to the intro to the sponsor, which this is a terrible way to start a podcast for future podcasters. But very one star. Rip, by the way, we're wearing the same one star t-shirts today, man. Throw them up. Hit the camera. Bought a Chargy Twins Day, unannounced. We had no idea. We found out 12 hours ago our guy Onik from the Shooting 2 podcast is having twins today. What a day. What a day. We're wearing the same, we're wearing the same shirt. Weight is being lost all over the place. Uh, discount codes are being corrected. DK and RIP to get your, your discount at 500 level. Turns out, been throwing it out in some group texts, RIP. A couple of my fantasy football group texts, kind of around Father's Day. Hey, 500 level they have like every athlete ever wwe ufc nfl so much nfl hype in your fantasy football father's day draft boom throw it out there get 20 percent off bottom line though bro our discount code got got turned off because it got snaked so we had to change it one star moment one star moment for me i sent it to my fantasy football text with our original discount code not dk and rip dk and rip is the new discount code to which I had what I thought, four or five buyers. Bam. Great sales, right, Rip? Great, great sponsorship, helping my friends out. All the everybody's winning here. Quickly, the return. Discount code doesn't work. One star. Everybody was sending me one stars, bro. Back in the in the fantasy football chat. But you got it changed. And I want to come out swinging with accountability. Maybe two, three weeks we had it wrong, Rip. Who knows? Now we got it right. DK and Rip. New discount code. Father's Day. Pretty cool Father's Day gifts in there. If you had to get your father, this is a great question because he is definitely not a sports guy. He's a gold panning and sitting on his porch type type human. What would you get him from 500 level with discount code? I'm not going to say it again, but you know what it is. What are you getting him? What flavor? Uh, if they had Bill Walton shirts, I'd get him a Bill Walton shirt because that's his era. He was you know, a little bit of a hippie back in the 70s, big Bill Walton guy. But unfortunately, they don't. So I'd go the opposite route. I'd get him someone he has no idea who it is, but he likes the color red. So I'd get him that electric Ellie, Ellie De La Cruz Cincinnati red shirt. He w- It would be the most funny thing ever seeing him wear an Ellie De La Cruz shirt around <laughs> Prescott, a 74-year-old man who has no idea who's on his shirt, but get a lot of respect from the teenagers. He likes the color red too. That's what we're going with at this stage. Uh, but so that's my that's my thing. One star moment by one star one star business move. We had a couple really good months of of partnerships here of sales until this mishap. So things happen. One, I'm leading it. I'm leading it off with one star stories. Reb is is what I'm doing. I got another one star story. My poor Hoka's. Everybody knows. All listeners know I love my Hoka's running shoes. Took me about eight months. But I put three massive holes in the bottom of the soles. I'm, I'm running on lava rock here, Rip, too. So that's not a, a knock on, on Hoka. I think eight to ten months is fair anyway to everyday running shoe, movement shoe, cement shoe. I don't know what you call it. I think that's fair. I could be. You could tell me if I'm wrong. A lot of people hate the fact that I like these things. It's crazy. Very controversial subject. But I'm here in Kauai, so it's a situation. There's a hole in my hokas, Rip. Dear Liza, dear Liza. There's a hole in my hokas. Is that a strange point in my 40s where I don't know exactly what I need to do with the new shoes era? It becomes like a huge decision for me for some odd reason. I mean, online has always been pretty fine to me. I think I've I've been an online shoe buyer the last five years. It's been pretty okay. Quick, easy. You get what you want. 
for some reason now in my 40s, I have the urge to want to try to try on shoes. I want to like talk to the Al Bundy at the, at the shoe store. Oh, oh no, rip. I'm getting old, bro, is what's happening. It falls in line with getting a haircut. It falls on like a real stressful thing. New shoes. Like I got to, I mean, am I just a, am I just a four year old? Sh should I, where should I turn for new kicks, Rip, at this point in time? Support a local place? Amazon? Straight to the website? Back to Hoka? Should I try on? What should I do? I'll tell you what I would do. Because when I was in France, my hotel was about 500 feet from a Hoka retail store in Paris. I think I sent you pictures. I was so excited. But then I went in the store. The cheapest pair of Hokas was 180 euros at the retail store, which is about $190. I walked out of that store as fast as I ever walked out of the store in my life. I went to Google. I'm looking at it right now. The exact pair of Hokas I have, size 12, Hoka Mach 4. I find it for fifty four dollars on, wow. on a website called on a website called Meg Price Hub. M E G Price Hub. Does that sound legit to you, DK? Fifty three dollars for a pair of Hoka's, brand new. So shady, Meg. Like Meg from Family Guy. That is the shadiest. That is guaranteed identity theft immediately upon even looking at that site. Give me a real price. That's what the thing, bro. You're in the streets of Paris. You're on the Saint Laurent de la Laurier's looking at at running shoes they're going to get you for 190 euros and then you look at meg ryan's cooch.com you're going to also get the low price does amazon carry i need to i think i go right to the source this is a terrible subject once again could be one of our worst podcast leads as of date but it's really a thing my gut instinct telling me just to go to amazon and just do go the amazon route and get get the get the hokas that i kind of had they're all fine. I think it's all kind of the same shit anyway. Maybe I should be looking at a new brand. It's an opportunity. Who fucking knows? You're telling me you're just going to go straight to the Google cheapest, period. You're done. Uh, could be the possibly the Timu of like the Midwest. I mean, this, is, this deal is incredible. I think I'm going to try it. If I if if it doesn't work out, I'm only out 53 bucks. It, it's worth the risk. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it. I'll report back to the listeners, see how it goes. Report back with your social security number and identity too, because they're going to have that pretty soon as well, bro. Good Godspeed. Good luck. So I'm in the market for new kicks. So that's good news. 182 pounds as of this morning. I'm feeling healthy. So that's down seven. If you're, well, six and a half pounds if you're taking note from when, when I started my little health journey. That's why my shoes are torn up a little bit. My goal ripped, you remember? July 1st, 178. And I'm going to add a little bit of juice to it, too, for my own ego. You ready? Give it to me. I'm going to do a post. I'm going to do a post on, on the One Star Recruits. Follow us if you don't. Uh, Instagram. Shirtless. July 1st. At my goal weight. So it's coming. There's a couple body parts right now currently fighting me for dear life. My love handles at this age just don't want to exit my body. You real, you start to feel your DNA, bro, at 42, like nobody's business. My belly, another DNA component. My father is all belly. Look at that man. He is four sticks and a belly, pretty much. Grandfather's on both sides, double belly bros. At 40, your moves just hang if you let them. They, 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 you might reappear on chest day or you do 50 push-ups and you see your pectorals come up. Next morning, you reap out. They're gone. Those are out of here the next morning. The reaper takes them from you. You're back to one of them's hanging a move. It's just being 40. But setting this goal has helped me. I've been eating really the right way every day. So things moving in the right direction. 182, we've really been at it for three and a half weeks. So that's seven pounds kind of the right way. I do feel stronger. I do feel lighter. I am sleeping better. All the things, bro. Any comments, advice, concerns? Uh, you got to stay in the gym. I don't even know if you live close to a gym, but if you get in that gym every day and, and do some bench presses and some some pec exercises, I think those those man boobs will turn into into real pecs even at 42. I've seen it. I've seen it happen. I'm no gym right now, but I do love to get into a gym when I can. I try to once a month find my way into a gym. I'm at 15K steps the last three weeks. That includes 20 flights of stairs. You can track that on the Heart app on your iPhone listeners out there. If you don't, you can actually step track your your stair 
I don't know what they call it. Velocity, that's the wrong word. Whatever, but I want to be at 20 flights. Very important. Push-ups, sit-ups, squats every day. Last three weeks, 20 minutes. I have 15-pound dumbbells. I use those quite a lot, kind of for everything right now. So I do 20 pounds, different or 15 pound dumbbells, different exercises, rip. Those exist here. So that's happening. I've already told you many times that I take the trash out. It's about half mile walk. All kinds of exercises going on with the trash bag. Gravy dripping from the right corner onto my slides. I don't care because I'm doing lateral raises with that trash bag. So I'm like a damn. This is this is this is the new this is the new way to do it. Food I had to completely eliminate sugar, which is tripping me out. I really feel like a crackhead. This is how coffee would feel too. And I've been thinking about cutting back on coffee. Rip, I know you not don't do coffee regularly, which I commend. I bow my head to you because it is the best part of my day. Literally. It is such a wonderful part of the day. It is a top part of life possibly that morning coffee. But I'm interested if if that has any Changes with my sleep, maybe helps a little bit more with the body at this age. I'm thinking about it, but I had to cut sugar and I'm feeling really like a crackhead, bro. There's nothing more than I want than to grab some cookies, those little, some little candies. For some reason right now, I fucking love Three Musketeers. Nobody likes Three Musketeers, Rip. Zero people. I met one other person in my life that actually gets Three Musketeers. Have you ever got it at any time in your life? Uh, trick or treating, people shove them in your bag. I'm not, I'm not opposed. I like that that nougat with the with the milk chocolate around it. Three Musketeers is, is underrated. Not nougat. This is not seized candy. Just a mousse, a simple mousse. Listeners, chocolate mousse, wonderful. As I get older, I fucking crave them. Rip obviously doesn't quite know what the nougat, but close, close though. You know what I mean? Definitely, I'm feeling my addictions to that sugar in the evenings, and it's just. It's really crackheady. The things I would do for a, a bag of Jelly Bellies and some Cherry Haribros. You know what I mean? But you got to flip it. You just got to turn it off. So I, I don't have any of that shit in the house. Switched it over. Eggs, Greek yogurt, honey, granola, chicken, rotisserie, and daily marinades in the chicken breasts and the sea breasts. So sick of it already after two weeks. But really helps, dude. Really helps to stay in like protein land. So... That's how I'm doing it. I'm going to keep it going. By the way, we had Winston just check while you were uh, rambling there. Uh, first Wikipedia page, Three Musketeers is a candy bar made in the United States. It is consists of chocolate-covered, fluffy, whipped nougat. First line of Wikipedia, buddy. Oh, fuck off. You're right. You're, well, you are from Paris, so you do know patisserie and, uh, you know, pawn. You're a pawn a expert at this stage. What are your fitness goals for this summer, Rip? What are your fitness goals this summer? What are you trying to do? Just... Stay mid. You're all I notice is you're staying pretty much the same dude I've known for 25 years. Your face just gets incredibly more wrinkly every picture I see. What's your fitness summer plans? Yeah, no skincare goals, just uh sunscreen, get in the gym, stay mid, and don't get injured, basically. So yeah, gym three times a week for about 45 minutes and don't get injured. Very simple goals. Uh one star goals, but you know, I'm uh I'm mid, like you said. You pull up to that, you, you get on that pull-up bar at the gym? No, I don't mess with the pull-up bar. I do some machine weights, I do some running on the treadmill and uh shower and I'm out. So you settling back into life after your European soiree, you're back on a time schedule, eating burritos, back to being a good an American. Had two Trader Joe's uh, carne asada burritos about 60 minutes before this podcast. So I'll probably have to take a break to go to the bathroom pretty soon. But yeah, I'm back on the routine. I love it. I'm more of a routine guy, I think, than anyone I know. So I'm, I'm right where I'm supposed to be, DK. Like my animals, you're right back on it. Feel good. Notice anything with yourself, your soul, your body since going on this vacation and coming back. Do you feel more recharged? Do you feel like you're catching up? Where's your Where's your vibe on life after this? A lot of people think European vacations are exactly what they need to find happiness. I had happiness before, but it, there's a little enlightenment with the European lifestyle as far as just relaxing and taking things at a slower pace and, and really... uh figuring out there's more meaning to life than, than the daily grind and the hustle and bustle. So it's always a balance, of course, but I think uh, just those kind of reminders help a ton. So what has to hit for you for to have a, uh, a rip in the family successful summer? What are a couple ingredients you put in the pot 
for a successful summer for for Rip at this stage. I mean, we only got forty more summers left, bro. Wow, that's depressing. Uh, the, this summer, just right off the top of my head, I'm saying no hospital visits. Number one, health. Health is always uh, number one. I think uh, getting the teachers that we want for our kids next school year. That's a big parent thing. So speak it, speak into existence. I don't think my mom and dad ever even knew who my teachers were or cared. So, but the, it's crazy, man. In in 2024, it's it's a thing you just wait. You count. You gotta down be to politicking. Day. You gotta be politicking, Rip. I'm sure you're nice on those emails, making sure they know I'll test scores, get them in some cumin math, a little bit of summer camp action. You gotta let them know how these kids are developing. And then the last one is just have fun. I mean, I, I think that's uh, goes without being said, especially out here in Southern California where it's sunny every day. Kids play outside. I mean, when I think back to my childhood summers, it was all about playing with friends and not having any care in the world. Popsicles every day, that sort of thing. So as long as we have fun, uh, stay out of the hospital and get the teachers we want for the kids. I think it's, it's going to be a good summer. I don't preach on it. Dad mode, fully dad mode. And I like that. Nothing for you in particular. No, no, all family man centric at this stage in life. That sounds like a good summer. Good summer to me is going to be out to stay with, stay in these fitness goals. I think I'm finding a good stride at something that I might be able to keep up for a good next 20 years of my life. If I can find this routine like you rip, a lot of the fitness stuff's kind of just finding your routine and then, then sitting in it, vibing with it, and then being able to switch it up in different environments that call for it, you know? skiing be able to ski go do you know just be be able to activate your body in different environments especially you're coming into dad mode of you're going to get into the teenage years where they're going to be wanting to do shit you got to participate so summer goals for me to find that that vibe i really want to enjoy hawaii i don't know how much longer i'm going to be here life's crazy you never know twists and turns are going to happen but i really want to en want to enjoy it and like i said 40 more of these things so really live in the moments, get in nature, feel small, get in the damn ocean, find your way to a body of water this summer, listeners, something always with humans and water. It's a mix. It works. It's a you nice any, thing. You got any trips planned? I don't have any trips planned. I have the opportunity to do some trips. Kimmy's going to go ahead and, and, and do some trips, do some visits. I made a commitment to uh, really committing myself to this island for the summer and laying in. I got some ideas. I got some new projects coming up. We got a new season in the podcast that we're going to, we're going to drop after the 4th of July rip. So I'm going to mix in a little bit more live action stuff that's happened to me on the Island. Cause I want to show off a little bit. There's, you know, I haven't, I haven't done a good enough job showing off the Island of Kauai or talking about it back in Maui. We did a lot of cool shit and I still love Maui. Uh, and we're, and we're always going to talk about Maui, but I think I want to highlight some more of this beautiful Island. Stay tuned. Summer's coming, though. It's going to be good. The end of summer kind of begins with the NBA Finals. This is the last of the last remnants of years past a little bit. The finals are set. Boston Celtics versus Dallas Mavericks. Odd matchup. Nobody really expected to see the Mavs here. The betting lines definitely agree with that statement as we move into the finals. The betting lines say the Celtics are going to be doing another duck boat parade through the streets of Brookline. And uh, and eating crab cakes in in Newton is what's going to be happening, as, as according to the the betting lines. Looks like kind of everything is there for Boston to win this thing, which is a huge red flag for me to go the other way, Rip. But I want to do a couple of backstories that are interesting to me. I'm going to pass it to you too because I'm interesting. What what are you excited about? Because this is a unique finals for fans like us, kind of separated from these teams. We understand the history, and we also see the greatness in some of the players that are lining up here on both squads. What are you most excited about, about the NBA Finals? Uh, it's probably a weird one. It's really to see Porzingis back in the mix. And I mean, this is the whole reason they got him is to have depth in the playoffs and a, and a kind of a third star. So he's been out most of the playoffs, but it's uh, news broke today that he's back for game one. So he's healthy for this series. Used to play on the Mavericks. Not, not many people may remember. Everyone knows Kyrie played for the Celtics and that was kind of a bad ending, but Porzingis might be a revenge series for him going against his former franchise. So I'm excited to see what he adds to the team uh, in the seven game series. Yeah. Announced that he'll be ready to go for game one. This is great news to get some, some bigs to spread the floor a little bit. The Celtics, the question really is pretty clear, pretty easy. Like you said, rip, can they get through the hunch? 
to win the big one. Al Horford's kind of in his last year. Jalen Brown, to me, I could be wrong about this. I'm curious how you feel. Although he got paid, he always feels like the odd man out on this team. The additions of Holiday and Derek White and their high level of IQ and hoops and how they play the game. God, I love watching Derek Derek White rip. God, I, do yourself a favor and plant your eyes on D, on, on D White for a couple plays during this series. He always makes the right plays. He's always moving in the kind of the right direction, setting people up for success. God, he would have been perfect on the Phoenix Suns. My soul hurts as I even think about that right now. I'm sure Kyrie and Luca will be hunting your boy Porzingis a little bit like they did with Rudy G. Does that concern you, Rip? Any any chance that that's just going to be maneuvered a little bit if we got an injured Porzingis and a tired Horford up playing that pick and roll at the top of the key with Kyrie and Luca? Seems like they're going to get toasted. I don't think so. I mean, uh, these guys are battle tested. They were here just what two years ago against the uh, the Warriors, where they lost. So it, it's one of these things where in the the natural evolution of a franchise and a team, they've kept things mostly together, which a lot of people think the Phoenix Suns should have done after their loss in the finals. But Boston has done it, and we'll see if it uh, works out for them winning the title. I mean, Dallas is Dallas is a year and maybe two months into this Kyrie and Luca thing, so. It's early for them in that evolution. So we'll see if they can they can cross that hump now or if it takes another year or two. The reality TV, big we'll see, as usual. I got Boston in six. That's that's my prediction. However, however, the Dallas Dallas Mavericks have a this wonderful thing in sports, especially in the postseason, this wonderful little bubble that sports teams sometimes get into when your stars are peaking at the right time and your role players are kind of becoming the next evolution of players almost becoming mini stars in a sense and that's happening to dallas right before our very eyes i talked about this dallas front line being the biggest kind of surprise impressment to me on another podcast Derek lively pj washington daniel gaffrick Derek jones jr I very much applaud Jason Kidd for seeing that energy of this new group with Kyrie and the Slovenian stallion obviously doing their thing. Tim Hardaway Jr. was out. He's not part of the big three. Big two plus four. This GM, Nico Harrison, rips off vision. Nobody, they booed Derek Lively. They were ready to, they were calling for Jason Kidd's head, his job for him to be fired in Dallas last year and this guy nico harrison kind of interesting actually side note congrats to nico harrison by the way contract extension former nike marketing guy rip by the way did you know this yeah i remember when he was hired that was the story he was a big, big was... nike guy with all the connections which is a little bit as times are changing this is a side note but bob myers wasn't a basketball agent be be before becoming a gm kind of an interesting that that had never happened before that you're seeing that now more often nico worked at nike not always the traditional route of an old basketball head, some analytic genius. That was another one. Or, of course, the X player. That's one. Although, although the X player sometimes really works out. See Jerry West. Hopefully, see former one star guest Trajan Langdon. Big congrats to him on the president of B Ball Ops for the Detroit Pistons. They need him. Great hire. By the way, Rip. That president of basketball ops is the top guy in the NBA. The GM falls under the president of b-ball ops. So congrats to him. The Cuban situation is interesting and kind of a fun story. How much do you know about this Cuban selling the team situation in Dallas and some of the plans for what they're trying to do with North Texas, Rip? Yeah, I remember seeing that happening earlier this year. I mean, he he's a business guy. I'm sure he's always going to be involved. But yeah, it was a little shocking at the time. There's still a lot of kind of questions that are out there. It just happened six months ago. Essentially, I'll explain this to my, my mother here, mom, in a nutshell. What happened is Mark Cuban bought this team in 2000. He sold a majority stake to a Las Vegas-based casino magnet family, Miriam Adelson and, and her family. And her son, Patrick Dumas, is the acting governor of this team. And basically, essentially, Cuban sold $3.5 billion of his, of his stake, which is crazy money. So cashed out, cash, to ching $3.5 billion. He still has 27% stake in the Mavericks, and he continues to run basketball operations. This was in the contract. 
but this Adelson Dumont family are the majority owners. What does that mean? Why is that? Why, why would he even do that Cuban? People were kind of asking, and this is from my understanding here too. So listeners feel free to, to, to come at us too, how you do on YouTube. It's lovely when I'm incorrect. One star moments all the time in storytelling. But in a nutshell, what's happening in North Texas is kind of interesting. It's worth keeping an eye on. Dallas is looking to become a gambling hub of this region of, of North Texas. So one of the most significant implications is a new arena with a mega casino attached to it. This is happening actually already in Cleveland, but it's Cleveland. So this kind of development could serve as a major attraction for basketball fans and beyond in this, in this part of the country. So this is the shift that Cuban saw and kind of moved forward in these ownership dynamics a little bit more of seeing the bigger picture. Texas in particular is kind of interesting as well, Rip, because Tillman Furtado, who owns the Houston Rockets, also owns the Golden Nugget as part of his portfolio. You don't think he sees the writing on the wall? What's happening in the state of Texas right now is bigger than a lot of different plays. I think what they're looking to do is become this gambling mecca in this part of the country and change that that identity kind of share it with Las Vegas a little bit more. My my strange prediction a little bit over the next 10 years that this part of the country becomes that. If you follow the breadcrumbs, it looks like this part is getting into the gambling biz big time. A state known for it. The bigger, the better. And I'm excited for it. So that's that's my take on what's happening in Dallas. At the end of the day, I say all of this to say there's big stakes on the line for both cities and teams in this finals. Both franchises, it kind of steers the ship drastically in different directions with a win. A win propels the Boston Celtics team maybe into a dynasty, keeping this team together for a while, finding another big to get in there and and help out Porzingis. If Porzingis can be what everybody thinks he is, you including Rip. For Dallas, it's obvious from what I laid forward. What a way to propel yourself into success if this is the direction that you're going. Reminds me of the Golden State Warriors doing the new arena project. In San Francisco, the timing couldn't have been better. You got to sell tickets. You got to raise money. You got to get people hyped up. Winning a championship, there ain't no better way. So lots of we'll see in 2024 in that story. Story time with DK, Rip. That's my 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 hypotenuse. So you think the uh, the Botticargi twins in, in about 25 years could have their bachelor party in, in the Dallas instead of yeah Vegas. big time that's what, exactly what I'm saying and it becomes this you're gonna see Frisco Texas and down there where Jerry Jones world already exists connect with Dallas through a string of casinos I think it that's people love to gamble rip it's happening crazy and we've seen it happen on Indian reservations for a while now and it's Kind of like cannabis. It's starting to bubble in certain areas and it's just going to start popping. I think the signs are here for the Bonachari twins to to be having their graduation parties at a Houston casino playing blackjack or Baccarat. Who knows what their game is? Feels like a weird time to to open up mega casinos with online gambling, all the rage and, and kind of taking over market share. But hey. Mark Cuban is nah, a we're going smart back. Guy. Gen Z is going back to experience. Gen Z wants experience. They will lead the way. I actually believe in some Gen Z stuff. Save that for another topic, Rip. One star moments of the week, listeners. Anything shitty that we did? I've been talking this whole podcast, Rip. Go ahead. What's your one star moment? I'm going back to my Paris trip a couple weeks ago because I had this one in the bank and I, I didn't say it last week, but uh, it was late, I think, on our second night there in the hotel after dinner winding down and I felt like I, I needed some ice cream. So I, I, I looked up the nearest store and it was right around the corner. So I went into this, uh, this little market. They had crazy display of ice creams. Uh, the one that hit for me was these Hagen dazs uh, caramel and vanilla chocolate bars. I know, I know you've had these in your life. So my wife's, my wife's like, I'll be right back. So I'm going to go down there. I grab them. I grab a four pack. I'm thinking like, oh, my wife will be hungry. I'll just pop. you will each eat one. I'll pop the other two in the freezer. I was at, probably out about 20 minutes. I get back and my wife is sound asleep in the hotel. And I'm stuck with, with this four pack of ice cream bars because as I found out, I pounded one, went to put them in the freezer. There's no freezer. It's just uh, It's just a refrigerator. So you can see what kind of happened next. You can see the writing on the wall. I, I tried to make it through all four. 
I shame shamefully ate three Hagen Dazs bars in a, in a span of about ninety seconds, and uh, tried to actually salvage the fourth one and, and put it in the fridge and, and hope it would be all right for the next day. Uh, save it for my wife for the morning. Very disgusted with myself, fell asleep, and uh, I woke up and it was melted in the fridge the next day. So one star moment of the week a couple weeks ago, yeah, three probably about fourteen hundred calories. Speaking of the opposite, you want to do for your body in the summer, uh, Hagen Dazs, beware. It's funny because I what stands out to me is the moment of panic when you recognize there's no freezer, which I can I know your face so well, and you're immediately you went into complete panic mode and solution mode, and then the second part is I can picture you sitting in a small Parisian chair, dark room. over over dark room over a trash can, holding your hand under or it's like some shitty toilet paper, French toilet paper, uh. Just doing your best, thinking about still other ways to save the fourth bar, if possible. Could you grab ice from downstairs? Is there another place? And uh, just being a sad, sad sack of shit. And think I about just... that. I'm a, a former eating champ. I once ate uh, three. Uh, everyone knows I ate three and a half giant donuts in in three minutes, and I, I could not put down this fourth Hagen Dazs. I maybe it was a, a moment of of weakness, or I don't know what it was, but I just couldn't make it happen. No, it's the unexpected shame. The unex you were ready for the donut eating contest. You were prepared. You were mentally prepped. You had already decided you were going to do this thing. The moment that you saw this was a Parisian ice box, sans no freezer. That's when panic set in, and your body just your your body's rejecting that. They know that's not the answer, but it's the right play. I knew I can see you were just a sad sack of shit eating those things, doing the best you can. Because guys, you hate to waste those. How many euros you pay for those? Sixteen euros. That's going through uh, your head too. No, it was crazy. Yeah, it was like twelve euros, which yeah, is about thirteen bucks. I mean, it was way overpriced because it was a market at like eleven thirty at night, and one of those convenience stores that always prices things up. So, yeah, I felt like I I had to do it because I didn't want to throw that money down the drain. Shame eating, man. It's part of all of us. I have one area where I used to put my gummies. I told you I'm not doing sugar. I dumped out the whole thing looking for bottom gummies that fell out of the bag. Lucy's. All the fat people know about Lucy's. Not even any any loose gummies at the bottom of my container. I know about shame eating, Rip. One star moment for me. It's food as well. Let me get right to it. I found a roach in a salad. Unfortunately, very much unfortunately, it's from a place that I really like. It's one of the few like crypt quick grab healthy tippy places without naming it. I don't want to name it because that sucks, but it was... I'm doing health. I just talked about it. I spent 20 minutes yapping about it in this place. So I was grabbing my quinoa pesto and odd shape and on and top and odd salad. It's pretty good. And I noticed an odd shape olive. It caught my eye, corner of my eye. It was not an olive rip. It was a full grown dead roach. Ooh, about an inch, about an inch and a quarter, inch and a quad. So I'm done with that place. Strangely enough, though, we, Strangely enough, though, mentally, I'm proud of myself. Simply threw it away, let it go, forgave them. Sometimes it's people have a miss in life. Things get through the system. I did a good job of not letting it ruin my night, essentially. Because that could be a gross out thing and then a mental thing and then an anger. You can access 17 emotions when you find a roach. It's nice just to kind of accept it and move on. So, I, you know, shit what happens. A- what opposite one star moments, man. I was trying to eat unhealthy on purpose and ended up way overdoing it. You were trying to eat healthy and couldn't even do it because you it stopped you. A roach stopped you. That's incredible. But how how much was that salad? About twenty two bucks? That was about twelve euros too, man. I matched you euro for euro. I Oof. think for that thing. For that thing. It's a damn shame. A real as I even say it now, I don't even like saying it because it's a damn shame because I'm like a like my wonderful co-host and friend here. I'm a man of routine. And when you start finding healthy options, you want to stay within them. This health and wellness podcast. This is our health and wellness podcast right here, Rip. Pretty much. It's going to flow into my, it's going to flow into my one star recommendation of the week. One star Rex of the week. I made a Costco mistake a couple months ago when I was at Costco, when I was a Costco newbie, if you remember Maybe last year when I first got my membership, a gold card, a gold Costco rep. I was so excited. I bought a huge box of protein bars and then proceeded to hibernate for the winter and eat zero protein bars. One protein bar was 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 grubbed. 
in that hibernation session. So Kimmy cleared out the pantry and she dumped 36 protein bars into a bowl. Happened to be by the blender where I've been making my protein shakes. So I don't know why I've never done this before, but I added my peanut butter flavored teen bar into my protein shake. So water, chocolate protein, protein peanut butter bar, a uh, little bit of coconut water, blend it up, give it a shake. Dude, it added some real depth and thickness to my protein shake that it needed, plus another 20 grams of teen to my shake. So go ahead and throw a whole protein bar in with your in with your in your blender and your protein shake and double it down it's way easier i at one point in time i was doing the chew if anybody's ever eaten a protein bar you it's very chalky and once you go about three bites deep you are entering very chalky hard to swallow zone so i do like 13 to 16 bites of protein bar and then chase it down with the protein shake just throw them together I like that. What's the shelf life of a protein bar, by the way? Are, you, are they expired or are they still good? 2025, still good. So three years. Amazing. Uh, lots of lots of preservatives in there. But yeah, you need to do 35 more of them now? Lots of preservatives in there. Lots of sugar. L more sugar, not lots, but more sugar than you really even need in that situation. No, I'm just going to get through them and I'm going to tap out on them. I, that's not The protein bar game is not for me. I, I got to get protein through whole foods at this age, Rip. I talked about it. All right. Well, I was going to do a food wreck too, but I'll, ch I'll switch it up and save this one since you did a food wreck. Uh, Netflix show, DK, Late Night in Paris again. Found myself watching a show called Baby Reindeer. You, you heard of it? You seen it? Heard of it. Haven't seen it. You got to watch it, man. It's about a stalker, this crazy stalker woman, but actually turns out to be almost as much about the guy she's stalking. It's crazy. It'll make you hate the guy, make you love the guy, make you cry, make you laugh, make you smile, make you sweat. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a really good show. I think it's six episodes. Uh, it's, it's kind of all the buzz right now. I think definitely in the Netflix top three for sure right now. Uh, so get it while it's hot. Baby Reindeer on Netflix. Check it out, DK. Okay, check it out. Nice Netflix rack. What was your food rack for fun? What was it? No, I'm saving it for next week, man. These things don't, uh, it's not a dime a dozen. These, These don't th grow on trees. These aren't yeah. like seven footers. Come on. Just give us a hint, bro. You ate German pancakes upon your return from, have you had a burger yet? An American burger? Uh, yeah, I did. I had a Costco frozen Angus burger. That should be another rack. Those things are amazing. Microwave it for three minutes. Tastes, tastes just like Wendy's. That's terrible. That's it's terrible. It sounds all sounds terrible. If you need frozen, we don't do frozen. Wendy's doesn't even do frozen. They got a new three dollar breakfast sandwich. I do want to try. I don't have a Wendy's. I haven't had Wendy's in ten years. I'm kill for a Wendy's. I would eat my thumb right now for an In and Out burger. As I think about it, I'll send you one on dry ice, frozen. So damn good. Hit the music. Rips reacts. Caitlin Clark, Indiana Fever. She's faced some adversity, Rip. She's getting roughed up. She's getting fouled hard. It's a lot of one-star welcome to the league moments. Angel Reese, former one-star guest, said this week that she will go down as one of the greats when they look back at this golden era of women's basketball. Not just Caitlin Clark. Rip, we are one month in. Do you need stars and villains? The NBA literally wrote the playbook on this with Jordan versus Bird, Isaiah versus Jordan, Kobe versus everybody. Is the Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese beef exactly what the W needs? It's exactly what it needs. I mean, it's drawn so much interest in women's basketball. And hey, look, they said a lot of these same things about Steph Curry when he came in. He was only a shooter. He was ruining AAU basketball, ruined kids' development. But look where he is now. So Caitlin Clark's getting a lot of hate. Uh, I think if she can co somehow come out on the other side of this, she's going to be one of the best scorers in the history of the league. Too much too fast with Caitlin Clark. League, though, stop putting all her games on national TV right now. Give it some give it some space to breathe for a little bit. But I don't care. I'm in. We're in the purgatory of sports right now. In the sports world, a lot of silly podcasts we will talk about this purgatory space not us we're talking about the WNBA and fitness rip health and fitness podcast right here big health and fitness podcast 
The one star curse has fallen upon our dear friend, former guest, Spencer Torkelson. One star alumni, man, friend of the pod, demoted, headed down to Toledo, triple A. Some writers are saying this could be the end completely. Looking like one of the worst first picks in the history of baseball, even. The guy can't see major league pitches that well. Rip, if you're in Spencer's circle, what's one out of the box thing that you would recommend for him to get back on track? This kind of really hit home because the thing I read is that he's slow on fastballs, like slow to catch up on fastballs. And to me, it's like I have the same thing with my kids. Both of my sons are swinging a little late. My advice, one star coaching advice, swing earlier. It doesn't sound like rocket science, but I understand the major leagues coming 95, 100 miles an hour. You got to read that thing and hit it. But I, if anyone has the cure to this, to, to, to being slow on fastballs, I mean, is, is there no overcoming it? I don't know. But I, I really want to see how this plays out because uh, whatever he does to fix it, I'm going to sign my sons up for it, That's for sure. Train Winston, let's get that one clipped. Rip with the just great advice. Swing sooner. Just five star advice, man, to a poor guy struggling down in Toledo, Ohio. Yeah, it's tough <laughs> in the big leagues. I want to do some stats, but I'm not going to because I don't want to beat him down a little bit more. But he's got to find his swagger. Sometimes a change of environment could be it, too. Not that the minors are that. Ideally, you want to get maybe traded to the right major league team where you're able could be the stadium. It's not, though, because he can't hit in any stadium. Come on, Torque. We believe in you, man. Rip hey, if you, if, hey, if you listen to our interview with him, I mean, it could all come back to that decision he made early on to not go with Eminem Lose Yourself as his walk-up song. I don't believe he ever changed it. Could have changed the entire course of his career, DK. Take our it, advice. It was great advice. It was great advice. He should have, looking back, man. Also, you, Rip's ego just threw the roof after winning that donut eating contest. You haven't, your head's gotten nowhere smaller since you've become a European traveler and donut eating champion rip lebron james he said this he said as soon as i hopped in the studio with jj for an episode for episode one i realized i might have the next pat riley on our hands it's looking like it's going to happen this week rip will jj reddick be a successful lakers head coach he will not the lakers have a long history of going with the glitz and glam as the hire and uh some of these guys only last a few months i mean i like reddick he's a smart guy i love his podcast but he's also a cocky asshole and he'll tell you that and uh i think i think he hasn't had enough experience on the sidelines he might have been a really good player and a role player and all that but under some really good coaches but i don't think he's had enough hands-on experience so uh i think he's gonna flame out just like a lot of these other laker coaches have recently Hater in the house, hater in the house. Oilers and the Panthers set to meet in the Stanley Cup final. Edmonton and Sunrise, Florida. It's 2,543 miles apart. It's the furthest between two cities meeting in the NHL's championship in the history of the NHL rip. First question, who you got? Edmonton, Oilers, or Florida Panthers? I understand Florida is a really good team, but it makes no sense to have hockey in Florida. Canada really needs a Stanley Cup. Edmonton all the way. Same. Edmonton all the way. Let's go. Let's get it. Follow up question to that distance rip. What's the furthest distance you've ever drove a car in reverse? 75 yards. Really? I For some reason, I thought you might be in the half a mile range, maybe driving it in a neighborhood that didn't go forward or something. Are you sure? 75 yards only. It's a guess, and I'm guessing the venue was uh, the parking lot at Tempe Diablo Stadium uh, on a non-game day where there was no one else there. That that That's my best guess, man. 75 yards. Two more. Two more. This is a good week. I just got good ones this week. I'm sorry. We got a position change alert. Big position change alert. The Vikings head coach Kevin O'Connell said they are transitioning. ASU superstar Nikhil Harry from wide receiver to tight end. O'Connell said... Harry is fired up about the change. Rip, is this the, the fantasy football tight end you need on your roster? Nikhil Harry, Viking. Man, I'll believe it when I see it. I Don't they have a, a really good tight end up there already? TJ Hawkinson? What, Nikhil Harry's going to be a backup? Let's see, man. I, I'd like to see his career revived. He's an Arizona guy, but I just seems like grasping at straws to me. I think he's done. 50 years ago today, Cleveland's Major League Baseball team hosted the now infamous 10-cent beer night against the Rangers. 60,000 beers were sold. 
consumed by 25,000 fans. How many? Seven people were sent to the hospital. Not bad. The game was actually stopped due to drunken rioting. Go figure. Texas was declared the winner via the forfeit. Rip, what MLB city would you most like to see participate in a 10 cent beer night 2024? Oh man, I'd have to say Milwaukee is the the birthplace of a, a lot of these beers. Pabst, PBR, uh, I don't even know the other ones, but yeah, I think the some of those drinkers in Milwaukee could put them down, man. I'm going, I'm going with the Brewers. The Brewers, the city of Milwaukee, slurp on that one, swag on that one. Give us five stars, listeners. We'll be back next week. See you next week.